So I went to Charles, but I didn't tell him what was going on in my thoughts. I asked him to give me a straight shot of whiskey, and I always had the pills to make me high or low. So I went to into the bathroom and took those two elements, and what I was trying to do, I was trying to forget that voice. Stay good day. Welcome, my friends, to The Storyteller, who you'll find First Nations people from across Native North America who are following Jesus Christ without reservation. On today's program, we'll hear from a former nightclub entertainer whose life was miserable because of the choices he'd made. He thought about ending it all, but then something happened that would change his life forever. Oh, see you. Hello, my name is Jess French, and I'm a Cherokee Indian, and I live in Tahlequah, Oklahoma. I was a nightclub entertainer for 15 years, and I was raised up around music. All of my ancestors were musicians. And at an early age, about 12 years old, I got interested in music, playing the guitar, but not knowing God, uh, my music led me down the road of nightclubs and bars. And for 15 years, uh, that's what I did every weekend. And it started out... Yeah, I was enjoying it and enjoyed the attention, the money, the partying. And at the beginning, it was really fun. But after several years, 15 years of that kind of life and uh, what's involved in nightclub entertainment, drugs and alcohol, I got... Um, addictive to those drugs and alcohol and it wasn't fun anymore and also because of my lifestyle it created problems with my family my wife and I had two children at the time and my life revolved around uh, me my music and I would leave home on Friday evening to travel to Tulsa, Oklahoma, because that's where I did most of my entertaining. I'd be gone for three or four days, living like a single man when I got out of sight. And during the week after I got home, I didn't spend much time with my wife or children because I had been up for so many hours Without sleep or rest, it would take me two or three days to recover. Then I would leave again, do the same thing over and over. And I was getting tired. I felt so empty, uh, like a failure as a dad, failure as a husband, uh, failure as a citizen, because I wasn't contributing anything to society except just just bad and it wasn't fun anymore but i really didn't know what to do because that that's the only life that i really knew and then uh, we were having so many problems with our relationship i decided to move to los angeles california thinking that changing my location environment friends Start a new life. That was my idea of moving. Just get away from everybody and everything. But as soon as I got settled in, it wasn't long that I found another bar with a band. And the whole process started over and over again. And then eventually we moved back to Oklahoma. And uh, I was employed in a little town called Pryor, Oklahoma, about, oh, 60 miles from my house. A club 
called the Capri Club. And on a Friday evening, just like other Friday evenings, I was setting up my sound system, uh, wasn't thinking about God, wasn't thinking about church. Those were the furthest thing from my mind. And when a voice spoke to me and called me by my name, and he said, uh, Jess, where would you go tonight if Jesus came? Uh, I'd heard that Jesus was coming one day and I had the knowledge of God and believed in the existence of God. But for the first time when I heard that voice, I thought about my relationship with God and accountability to Him for my actions. And I didn't think I would go to heaven if, if Jesus came. And it scared me. And I asked the bartender, his name was Charles, and him and I were the only two in the building. So I went to Charles, but I didn't tell him what was going on in my thoughts. I asked him to give me a straight shot of whiskey. And I always had the pills to make me high or low. So I went to into the bathroom and took those two elements and what I was trying to do I was trying to forget that voice but periodically that voice would speak to me again when I was alone and sick and tired and hung over I didn't feel that anybody loved me and Several times I would contemplate on just hitting a bridge, killing myself, because I wasn't a good person, wasn't a good husband, wasn't a good father. I came in one morning from the club about 4 a.m., and I woke up at about 8, and I wanted to go to church. And if there was a truth... If there was a God, I wanted him to be real to me. And God said, Jess, you've tried everything, and you can't find it. You're still empty. He said, why don't you try me? So I started attending services. Sunday morning and Sunday school and morning worship, learning about God and Jesus. And finally, I learned that my problem was sin. I was born with sinful nature, and I was in bondage. And I learned that God loved me in spite of my behavior and conduct. And that he gave his only begotten son, named Jesus, to die for me. And raised from the dead early Sunday morning. And if I would by faith be willing to turn my life over to him, trusting only in his finished works on the cross, he would save me from my sins. He would give me new life. I wanted to do that so badly, but I couldn't do it. I had some things hidden in my life from my wife and other things that if I did become a Christian, that I, there was a possibility that I would lose my family, my wife. But I had to get right with the Lord. I had no peace in my soul. And so finally... After four months of listening to the gospel, I went forward, even if I had to lose my wife and my children. And if I did, I I deserved it because of my life. But fortunately, God allowed me to keep my family. And that morning, when I trusted in Jesus, I felt so clean inside i had so much peace and joy 
hope and love. And I had a purpose for my life. And that was to serve God. And I serve Him today with my life in my community and telling others about Jesus through my music to share His wonderful love and forgiveness. And God has given me a new life in Christ. You know, the Bible says, all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. There's none righteous, no, not one. And the Bible also says the wages of sin is death, but the gift of God is eternal life through the Lord Jesus Christ. It's not through baptism, because I was baptized at 11 years old, but my life was not changed. It was only when I admitted that I was a sinner and I was willing to accept Christ. The Bible says that Jesus came unto his own, but his own received him not. But as many as received him, he gave them power to make them the children of God. And also Jesus said, I'm the way, the truth, and the life. No man can come to the Father but by me. And so the Lord says that... Uh, if we believe that Christ died and rose again, thou shalt be saved. For with the heart man believes unto righteous, and with the mouth confession is made unto salvation. So the Bible says, For whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. And it's so simple. It's just uh, admitting that you're a sinner and that God loves you. And if you invite him into your heart, that he will forgive you, make you a new creature in Christ. And I would encourage you to do that because if we die in our sins without the Lord Jesus, the Bible says that God will have to judge us because God is a just God, but he, he loves us through Jesus and he did something for us that we could not do for ourselves. Stories like this remind us that there really is hope. But as you've just heard, it's only found in Jesus Christ. Jesus did something that we cannot do ourselves. He made a way for us to have peace with God by paying for our sin by His death on the cross. Then God proved that justice was satisfied by raising Him from the dead. Think about it. Our Creator God made the ultimate sacrifice so that we could have peace with Him. Whoever humbly turns to God and puts their trust in Jesus, God forgives them, saves them, and makes them His own. My friend, there's no other way to have real peace than to be right with your Creator. Will you believe? Will you trust Him? We read in the Bible, May the God of hope fill you with all joy and peace in believing, so that by the power of the Holy Spirit you may abound in hope. If you have any questions or comments, you can write to us at The Storyteller, P.O. Box 1001, Bemidji, Minnesota, 56619. That's P.O. Box 1001, Bemidji, Minnesota. 56619. Our phone number is 877-766-4648. Our web address is withoutreservation.com. Thanks for listening. And remember, the greatest story took place at the cross. For the wages of sin is death, but the gift of God is eternal life through Jesus Christ our Lord. My friends, there are more amazing stories to tell, so be sure to join us again next time as we listen to The Storyteller.